Hello everyone, I'm Arunima from Nitonata and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these log cabin blocks in Tunisian crochet. Um, I'm going to do it two ways. So these are two blocks which are made with a similar technique but uh, they're made differently in that for this one you can see that the stitches are all lined up in one direction so you just make this block like this whereas in this one you start at the center and then you go around like this so the construction of this one is also such that you're going in around like this but you end up making your stitches in the exact same direction whereas in this one you make your stitches in the direction that you're making your the strip that you're working on so there are two ways these two ways of doing it and i'm going to go over both of them in this video it's so a little bit about um, the pros and cons of each of them so i really like both for different reasons for say for instance this one um, this one starts at the center and i I feel like it's a true log cabin block where you are working in the direction um, in a different direction with every strip that you're working on so you start here and this is made in this direction and this one goes here and this one is made like this and this one like this so that's one two three four five six seven strips and you make each of them in a different direction so uh, the advantage with this is that it is nearly a square and uh, I say nearly because um, it is you can see that this little uh, place where we're joining it doesn't it doesn't level out and I think that the reason for that is that Tunisian stitches um, are there are they are usually longer than they're wider so if you are working in a certain direction and you start working in the opposite direction or, or perpendicular to this one it's just there is a difference in the height and the width and that's why to compensate for that there this this shows up so i think th this is an unblocked square so if you uh, block this most likely that will even out or you could give it a border but um, that is something that i found with with this one that was a little bit of um, it, it was nagging me so that's why i tried to make it this way and while you can see that the edges are nice and clean and straight in this one because we are working in the same direction it is overall this is longer than this is wide so it is it is not a square it is a rectangle even though the number of stitches so the number both of these squares are made with five stitches five rows as the starting so this one here was five rows five stitches and this one here was five rows five stitches and that's where i started from, from on both and you can see that clearly there is a difference that this is more square and this one is more like a rectangle and there's a little bit of difference in terms of curling as well so i used the tunisian simple stitch to make this and you can see that this one curls a little bit at the bottom and a little bit at the top that's mostly because you're starting um, as you make it you you're you're stitches are all in the same direction so the center lays out flat but these edges start to curl out where the sides are the uh where the sides don't but in this because you're working in different directions each strip will curl differently so this will curl a little here this one a little here this one a little here so as you keep moving in around um, the strips the end portions of these strips will keep curling a little bit again that's not a very big problem it can be blocked out or uh, you could give it a border but that's these are things that you'd have to consider when you are picking which one you want to make and one um the, the best part about this is that you can use up all of your leftover yarn from your stash. You can pick whatever colors you like and you can make different blocks. Uh, you can even make a full blanket or a full shawl depending on uh, what you want to make. And you can use up all of your leftover yarn. You could, you could plan your project and use yarn that you want in a specific colors uh, or you can pick exact colors that you want but uh, if you have leftover yarn that you want to use up this is a great project to use it for you can make a full blanket or your full project with just uh, continuing to make the same block or you could make multiple blocks and join them together to make a larger 
larger project. So I'm going to jump right in and I'm going to start with making this one first. So I have a bunch of Lily Sugar and Cream yarn that I'm going to use for this project and I'm going to show you um, how I made individual sections of this and so let's get started. So here I'm going to make this one first. So this is the one that I started with. So it's five rows and five stitches. So I start with this yarn and I have I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and five total stitches in my foundation row. So that's I like to make my stitches, uh, foundation row stitches in the back loop. So that's what I'm doing here. So that is five. And I'm going to make the return pass. So I'm going to go ahead and complete this by making five rows, five stitches. So you could make this with more number of rows and stitches, but um, I just I feel that if you use too many uh, the difference in the height and width will be more pronounced and so you will see you'll see a larger difference here with five stitches I see a difference enough that it's noticeable so if you use more stitches that will be more pronounced but uh, you could definitely try it with more number of stitches in your blocks So here I am at the end of five rows. This is five rows and five stitches. So you can see clearly that this is longer than it's wider. And that is what we're trying to compensate for when we're going around. And that's what causes these this um, section to look like this. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and bind off. So I, I usually don't chain in the beginning when I bind off, but lately, I found that I like it better if I do a chain one in the beginning. You may or may not do it depending on how you want it to be, but I like to make a chain one and then make a slip stitch bind off. So at this point, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave the two loops on the hook. I'm not going to yarn over and pull through because this is where I'm going to change color. So here again, if you look at this, I've made this block first and then instead of cutting the yarn and uh, joining a new one uh, independently, I just switch to using new uh, a different color here. And then I make this block and then I bind this off and then I switch colors and I make this so it just it goes in a continuous round. So here I'm going to pick this color. just pull through and that joins a new color at this point I'm going to turn my project sideways and I'm going to make my next block or next strip this way so we just worked this one exactly like this and then I am turning my project like this this way so I can make this next strip that will also be five rows five stitches so I'm going to pick my yarn so this one counts as the first stitch so I'm going to skip this first row here I'm going to insert my hook here in the second third fourth second third fourth and then I'm going to skip that last one and I'm going to make my fifth one in this last stitch over here so that I can I start at the beginning here and I end at that last stitch at the end there so 
that's the first then I'm picking up the second over here so I skipped that first one so one two three four and this is the last one I'm going to skip that I'm going to go all the way to the end and pick that one these two vertical bars over here so that's five stitches on my on my hook five loops on my hook and I'm going to make the return pass so because this is less wide than it's long that's why you can see that this bunches up a little and that's fine overall once you make your blocks the when when the project grows this uh, difference will become less and less pronounced so I'm going to make five rows of these five stitches so that's one two three four five one two three four five that's five rows five stitches and I'm going to bind off so all the stitches that I use and all techniques that I use in this video I'm going to link uh, two individual tutorials for those in the description below if you want to check them out I'm not talking about the bind off methods or the stitches in particular um, in detail in this video so that's how it looks so just made got this one done and got this one done so that's how it's looking and now I'm going to switch to a third color so I'm going to turn my project again it's going to be like this and I'm going to make this section now so I'm going to pick up another color and join so you see that you don't have really have to cut the yarn and join it just you can keep going in a continuous round so you don't have to stop and look at where you are so again so this is the first stitch I'm going to make a stitch in the second third fourth and fifth here and then because this is the join this is the first stitch over here for that next block so one two three four and the last one will go right here so you'll have five stitches per panel so this one will have five and this one will have five so that's one and then two three four and five and then this one will be this is where the join is so I go right here say so one two so I'm going to insert my hook in between stitches I'm not picking up the stitch like this I'm going in between stitches because I like I like how it looks better so right here sorry so if you see this vertical bar there's some space right next to it and that's where I'm going to insert my hook so that's one two three four and the last one goes into this by picking up the last two vertical bars so that should be ten loops on my hook so two four six eight ten so because these are two panels now the number of stitches doubled and I'm going to make my return pass that's one two three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So at this point, I should have I forgot, but I would have normally cut the previous colors and I'm start weaving in ends. But for now, I'm just going to cut this yarn and let those colors go. I may want to join them later, but I'm just going to reattach them. So get those out of the way. So that's how it's looking. So that's 10 stitches now. So you can see that it looks like this is just a continuation of this block. Uh, while we didn't pick up those stitches like we pick up TSS uh, simple stitches, I went in between that little space there to make these stitches, which which, which is very easy to do because it's very easy to find that spot where your hook just glides in so it's not hard to find that space so I'm going to make now I'm going to make five rows of this total so that's one and this is the second row Row three, row four. In row five. At this point, I'm going to bind off. So that's five rows, ten stitches. So the other and here I'm not going to uh, I'm going to leave the two loops on the hook here and this is how it's looking so this is at the end of those three panels so started with this one then we made this one and now this one and now I'm gonna make this one so it's going to be very similar to what we did just now, I'm going to pick another color. So about the colors, it's important to pick contrasting colors as you go because um, I like to, I, I, I've used uh, very different colors which are necessarily not, not necessarily matching, but I've not kept similar colors together or unmatching colors together. So for instance, I didn't put these two together or I didn't put these two together. So even though they're there, but I didn't I didn't put them together. I didn't put similar colors together either. This one and this one are very similar, so I put them on opposite sides. If I had put them right next to, if I'd made panels right next to each other, it would be hard to see the difference in those colors. So just another something to remember if you're making this out of your scrap yarn. So I'm going to join this. And that's my first stitch that's going to count at the f as the first stitch to make a total of 10 here now because again I have two panels so that will be so one and then two three four five and then this join will be the first two three four and I'm going to skip this last one and go over here to make the tenth so that my first stitch is right at the edge here and the last stitch is also right at the edge there. 
so that's one, two, three, four, five, and then this join here, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to skip this one and go in this, the two vertical bars at the end. So that's 10 loops on the hook, and I'm going to make five, a total of five rows of 10 stitches. So that's five rows of 10 stitches and I'm going to bind off This is the edge stitch and I'm going to leave it like that. So this is this portion. So if, it, if your swatch is looking like this, that's that's totally fine. It's not a problem as you see that it sort of evens out when you make these outer panels and the larger you make this, the lesser pronounced this difference is going to be. So I'm going to make this section now. So just turn your block sideways and turn it like this. and now we have three panels uh, so there'll be 15 stitches so i'm going to pick another color and join that so there's this is uh, going to be sort of a repetition of what i've showed you so far so i'm going to make this panel as the last panel for this block in this tutorial uh, so you can see how you go around this one at least the first one at least once so you join and then to identify five stitches per uh, panel that you will make your stitches in so this is the first one this counts as the first then you'll go here two three four five and then this join will be the first one for this one one two three four five and then this join the first for here so one two three four and then we'll skip the last one and go in this edge stitch here so you should have a total of 15 stitches uh, or 15 loops on your hook at the end of this forward pass. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then 
one, two, shouldn't be so hard. If it is so hard, then I didn't insert it at the right place. So there, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, skip this last one, and go insert it here. Five, so that's 15. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 15. Make the reverse pass just like you normally would. And I'm going to make five rows of 15 stitches. This is how it's looking at the end of five rows and I'm going to bind off now. And um, here I'm going to go ahead and complete this instead of changing color. So this is how it's looking at the end of this fourth, fifth panel. So that's one, two, three, four, five. It's one, two, three, four, five. So that's what I've just made. And you can see that 
uh, how uneven it was looking in the beginning it's not so bad anymore so it will look odd when you start off uh, because of that difference in height and width but it will sort of get offset uh, because of because you change keep changing sides and the longer you make it the lesser pronounced that difference will be so if you see that these sides they're lesser and lesser uh, pronounced so it's looking more like a square this is already starting to look like a square so all you have to do is you can keep going you just change color over here and make sure that every panel for every panel you make five stitches or the number of stitches that you're using as your base so if you made this with seven stitches so each panel would have seven stitches and just keep going and you can make this as large as you want or you can make individual squares and then join them there are a bunch of things that you can do with it that was the end of this block and if you see the back this is after i've woven in ends you can see these little ridges over here so those show up uh it's nice and neat and you can see that the colors are uh, this is where the joins have happened so if you uh, are making a larger project your back should look something like this and um, this is how the front is the second version which is this one and you can see so over here you can see that we went we but the first block, uh, first panel, and then we turned and we built it like this, and then we turned and built this one, and then we turned and we built this one, and then we turned and built this one. So with every panel that we make, we are turning our project. Now I'll show you how to make this one. And so I'm going to start with this block right here, and then I'm going to make this in around. So I'll, I'm going to go ahead and pick that same color, so I'm going to so both versions start with the exact same uh, base block so that is five rows five stitches for this sample here um, and with this one I'd say you could use any number of stitches without having that problem about uh, having the width and height being different so the square the joints seem odd but uh, the only difference in this one would be that the more number of stitches you use, the longer your project will be. So you can see that this length is more than the width. And if I had used more stitches, it would be longer still. So that's the only one thing that would happen. But otherwise, it will work out just as uh, just as well as, a, as one with lesser number of stitches. So that's that's what I really like about this this version where um, I don't have to worry about the number of stitches that I'm using, but I have to uh, compromise on the shape. I If I wanted a square, then I wouldn't be able to use this. So that's five rows, five stitches, and I'm going to bind off just the same way as earlier. And even with this, I'm going to stop here and uh, not complete that bind off row and I'm going to change color. This is how we join and instead of turning 90 degrees here, I'm going to turn a full 180 degrees. So. I started this panel like this and then I turned around and then I made this one next. So I turned it around and I'm going to start with a chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to make my foundation row stitches in the back loop. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to join here. So this is just like a regular join as you go join. And I'm, I have six loops on my hook at this point, and I'm going to yarn over, pull through two all the way to the beginning. And I'm going to make, I'm going to do five rows of this and match each one of them over here. And I'm sorry, and join with each one of them over here. So that was one, 
and the second one will be joined right here that's two three right here four and five going to leave it at two loops on the hook and so this is how it's looking right now so there's five rows five stitches and instead of binding off at this point I'm just going to change color over here so I'm going to pick my next color and join and I will not turn my project at this point I'm going to keep it as it is and I'm going to continue working so we're done with this one and we're done with this one and now we're making this panel right here and it's instead so we didn't turn the project so that's why instead of going in that direction we're making it in the same direction so you see here because we were turning the project so this goes in one direction this one and the other and then we're back in the same direction and then we change again but in this we're going in the same direction we're building our stitches in the same direction so I'm not going to turn my project and I'm going to go ahead and pick up five stitches here so that's one two three four five so five loops on the hook for this one and they're going to be five for this so I'm going to pick up one here from the join and then I'm going to go in these spaces for these three stitches and I'm going to pick up this last uh, the two vertical bars in the end so I'm going to pick this here where we joined and then I'm going to go in between those that that uh, I told you how it was easy to find the space to go in over here right next to the stitch so I don't pick this stitch directly I've seen that it doesn't come out as clean so I insert my hook here right next to that stitch and pick up a loop so that's one two three four for this so far and I'm going to make that fifth one here in the end so that's ten stitches two four six eight ten loops I'm going to make my complete my row So that's one and so you can see that this is just a continuation of the previous blocks because we're not turning the project the stitch direction remains the same it just feels like it is one continuous block with color changes I'm going to make five rows
and now at this point I'm going to bind off so you bind off after every two strips so this sort of if you hadn't changed color here you could just make this in one single color and you'd have that L-shaped uh, panel of the same color I just wanted to show you how to match it up with something like this Here at this point I have two loops on the hook and I'm going to change color now. At this point I'm going to turn my project 180 degrees. So here I have, this is where we are. This is how I made this section. So one, two, three, one, two, three. You can see that there, it's just, it's seamless. The edges sit well together. Um, and I don't have to worry about uh, the difference in height and width but I do get a rectangular block instead of a square so now I'm going to make I'm going to turn around and I'm going to make this and this so I turn around and I start with a five chain one two three four five and I make my foundation row stitches And then I join here just like I was making a join as uh, just joining as I go with this panel right here so that's one two three four five and at, at the beginning of this I'll have six loops on my hook so I'm going to do this uh, I'll have to do this for ten rows now because I'm going to compensate uh, I'm going to make it all along this edge so all the way until here Again, we're making stitches in the same direction as this as all the other panels so far so I haven't cut the yarn but I would normally do that I just cut the yarn at this point the ones that I've already used the colors I've already used and uh, I'd have to weave in all those ends so that's four and five And then five more for this so that we one, two, three, four, five. So one. So that's the end of 10 rows here just make sure that you have five rows per panel that's on the side and now uh, I oh I should have stopped here at two loops on the hook and I'm going to change color again you could or, or you could just continue with the same color but I'm going to uh, well 
I'm just going to show you this one with the same color actually. So I could change color and at this point I have completed one, two, three, four panels. So one, two, three, four. And I'm going to make this one and I don't have to change reverse, uh, change the direction of my project at this point. I could change color right here or I could continue making stitches with this color. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to use the same color and so so I need five stitches per panel. So that's one already here. So two, three, four, five. And for this one, I'll need five. So there'd be one join. This is where I'd insert my hook here, right here. Not, not where this is, but right here. And then there'll be, I'll be inserting it here right before this stitch, not pick this stitch up, just insert it in between right here. So one, two, three, and then I'll, make one here right at this join and then one two three four and the fifth one will be made by picking up that last two vertical bars over there so this is one on the hook so one two three four five and then i'm going in this space over here so that's one and then I'm going to go in that space right before the stitch. Two, three, four, and here in this joint, five. And then pick up this, that's one. Sorry, then insert your hook right before this one. So that's one. And two and three oops now whenever i struggle there's something wrong that i've done i picked i split the yarn there so three four and this last one will be that edge five so that's 15 on the hook at this point so i'm going one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so that's 15 stitches and see it lines up really nicely there is no pulling no stretching and uh, you can just keep going so i'm going to make five rows of this
So this is the end of five rows and I'm going to bind off at this point. So you remember, you have to remember to bind off at the end of the wide panel. So every time you make this wide panel, so we start with doing a join as you go uh, narrow panel and then we do a wide panel. So you have to always bind off after that wide panel. And I'm going to stop here for this tutorial, but you can just keep going. You could change color over here, flip your project again, turn it 180 degrees and make make this section and this one. So you're, you're, so you can see how this looks with without changing color. So here I had changed color. So this was one panel and I could have complete made this panel with the exact same color if I wouldn't have changed which is what I've done here so sort of making these l-shaped panels by uh, uh, and by changing color I can I can simulate the the lock cabin style but you can you can choose to change color whenever you want and you can see the difference between this one and this one and uh, I talked about all the details and all the pros and cons of making one over the other and I forgot to show you so here this is how it's looking at the back this is also fairly neat and here's a comparison so you can see that this join is different from how this one is so this one because it was made in a different direction it looks different like this but this one is just a join as you go so you see on on the uh, hard, uh, the vertical lines the joints are very uh, sort of seamless and you see these ridges only when you're joining um, on, at, uh, horizontally here so that's how it's looking at the back they both achieve the same thing they're slightly different but you are welcome to choose whichever you'd like and if you do make these uh, please share some pictures with me I'd love to see what your experience was like and uh, how yours turned out and um, I have a bunch of other tutorials which uh, talk about different Tunisian techniques I also have regular crochet tutorials and I have uh, some support videos for free patterns that are on my blog uh, which you are welcome to check out and if you like my videos please like and subscribe so you can get notifications for any new videos that I upload and um, thank you for watching bye bye